Good morning, students. Today the concept we discuss that is Bohr's atomic model. And this atomic model applicable only to the hydrogen atom. Before this one, as you know very well, we studied one of the model that is called as Rutherford nuclear atomic model. Rutherford also given the explanation about one of the model called as nuclear atomic model. But there is a limitations are there in nuclear atomic model that what he explained about the uh, model atom or structure of the atom. In the nuclear atomic model, there are limitations are there or some drawbacks are there. And according to nuclear atomic model, Rutherford or that nuclear atomic model, the, that model cannot explain about uh, some why the electrons are revolving around the nucleus and why the electrons they are radiating the energy around the nucleus in some orbits whenever the electrons are revolving around the nucleus they became unstable and radiate the energy for example whenever the electron is jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level that electron it emitting some radiation means it is emitting the energy in the form of the radiation why it is emitting the radiation that cannot explain by Rutherford atomic model and as well as why the electrons are evolving around the nucleus. That reason also cannot explain by the Rutherford nuclear atomic model. That's why in order to explain those reasons, the Neil Bohr, one of the scientists, he given one atomic model. That atomic model explain about why the electrons are evolving around the nucleus and another reason why it is emitting the energy whenever the electron is jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level. And here, here, what is the reason here? The nuclear atomic model, nuclear atomic model, this atomic model is given by Rutherford. Nuclear atomic model, model cannot explain about, cannot explain about, cannot explain, explain about, about, about why the electrons, why the electrons are revolving around the nucleus, why the electrons are, are revolving around the nucleus, revolving around the nucleus, nucleus and this is the first reason, this reason cannot explain by nuclear atomic model this one why the electrons are revolving around the nucleus the reason cannot explain by the code are this atomic model that is nuclear atomic model and second reason why the electrons why the electrons why the electrons are radiating electrons are emitting the energy emitting the energy in the form of radiation emitting the energy in the form of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation just we can call it as radiation these are the two important reasons these reasons cannot be explained by nuclear atomic model the nuclear atomic model is explained by Rutherford. In order to explain these two answers, or in, uh, in order to explain these two reasons, in 1913, in 1913, there is a scientist called Niels Bohr. His name is Niels Bohr. He given one of the model, Bohr, given the model called as, given the model called as Bohr's atomic model, you can call it as or a hydrogen atomic model because he has taken the example as hydrogen atomic model. Bohr's given the model model called called hydrogen atomic model or you can call it as Bohr's atomic model. Bohr's atomic model atomic model and here what he given the explanation he has taken the example as hydrogen atom. That is having the hydrogen as you know very well, that is having only one proton. That's why he taken that one as an example and that is a very simple atom. And he, by using that atom, he explained these two reasons. And whenever he is 
reasoning those two reasons and he given some postulates what is the first postulate that is that is all the electrons all the electrons electrons revolving around the nucleus all the electrons are revolving around revolving around the revolving around the nucleus nucleus in certain stable orbits in certain in certain stable orbits stable orbits orbits called as stationary orbits called as stationary orbits are there is a word called as definite orbits stationary orbits are stationary energy cells let us consider here this is the atom this is the atom i am calling i am going to call it as a stationary orbit whenever the electron is revolving if this electron is not emitting the radiation in the sense this orbit we are going to call it as a definite energy level or as stationary orbits as you know very well whenever the electron become unstable or whenever it is absorbing excess of energy from the outside then the electron or that electron is taking a transition from higher energy level to lower energy level it means it is jumping from higher energy state to lower energy state but some electrons they are not jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level it means these electrons is being continuously revolving only in this orbit whenever this electron is continuously revolving in this orbit then that electron is not going to emit any energy those orbits are called as stationary orbits what is stationary orbit here these are the orbits in these orbits in these orbits orbits are energy states in these orbits electrons are not radiating electrons are not radiating means emitting radiating energy energy those orbits are called as those orbits those orbits are called as stationary orbits called as stationary orbit stationary orbits or you can call it as definite energy levels stationary orbits this is the first postulate this one is the first postulate given by that is needs both this is the first one and here one more is there that is second one second important during revolution of electrons during revolution of electrons around the nucleus during the revolution of electrons around the nucleus around the nucleus the angular momentum of nucleus the angular momentum of as you know very well there are two momentums are there one is the linear momentum another one is angular momentum whenever the particle is moving in a straight line we can go to call it as a linear momentum or whenever the particle or the object is moving in a circular path then we are going to call it as a angular momentum this is the angular the angular momentum the angular momentum of electron angular momentum of electron is given by is given by or the angular momentum is an integral multiple of is an integral multiple of means the angular momentum can be calculated by using the formula that is an integral multiple of integral means it is a integer it is just a number multiple of multiple of h by 2 pi h by 2 pi here h is planck's constant and 2 pi this is a constant value and let us consider whenever the electron is revolving around the nucleus what is the path of the electron this is circular is there and here this is the velocity of electron this is velocity of electron and i am taking m is the mass of the electron and how to find out angular momentum as you know very well there is a theoretical formula 
the angular momentum can be indicated as therefore L. L is equal to there is a formula m into v into r. What is m? This is mass of electron. What is the velocity of r? Orbital velocity of electron. What is r? This is the distance from the center. This is distance from the center. If you multiply these two mathematical quantities, you are getting angular momentum of electron. What is angular momentum? How much energetically the electron is moving around the nucleus? That can be calculated by using one of the physical quantity that is called as angular momentum. Angular momentum is the quantity indicating how much energetically the electron is revolving. That is a momentum, but it is moving in a circular path. That's why I am using the word that is angular momentum. That can be calculated by using the formula that is h by 2 pi, or therefore that can be written as here. Angular momentum is equal to that is m into v into r. This is equal to n h by 2 pi. n h by 2 pi. Here n is integer. Here n is integer. n is integer. Its value is it should be one or it should be two. It should be three. So on up to infinity. Means what is indicating m? It is indicating number of the orbit. If the electron is revolving in the first orbit, you can take n is equal to one. If the electron is in second orbit, you can take n is equal to two. If it is three, so on up to infinity. Just you can substitute depending upon in which orbit the electron is revolving. Here, as no variable, l is equal to m here. This is m into v into r. It is indicating angular momentum. Angular momentum is equal to n h by two pi. And here, and here, n is integer. Here n is integer, integer, and h is Planck's constant. H is Planck's constant. Its value is constant. You know very well that is 6.62 pi to 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. And next, l is angular momentum. L is angular momentum. I am taking the arrow mark because angular momentum is the quantity. It is a vector quantity. L is angular momentum of electron. Angular momentum of electron. Momentum of electron with respect to of in which orbit is it? It is revolving. If it is in the second orbit, its angular momentum can be calculated. If you substitute n is equal to two, substitute all the values you are getting its angular momentum. Or if it is in the maximum energy levels, take the value of n as an infinity. Substitute and find out the angular momentum. What is angular momentum? In circular path, how energetically that the electron is revolving around the nucleus? That quantity we are going to call it as angular momentum. This is the second postulate. And next third is the third is the the energy of whenever when the electron. This is the third postulate. When the electron is jumping from Is jumping from jumping from higher energy level to higher energy level to higher energy level level that is I am taking it as a e two higher energy level to lower energy level lower energy level that is take lower energy level as that is e one. That is even. Then, then the energy of that electron means let us consider whenever electron is jumping from energy level second to energy level one, how much energy it is releasing? That is the question mark. Whenever the electron is jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level, it is emitting the energy in the form of radiation. How much the energy is released by that electron due to the transition in between e2 to e1? That can be calculated by using the formula that one. Then the energy of then the energy released by then the energy released by electron electron can be calculated by can be given by R just now take calculated by given by E is equal to e1 e2 minus of e1. Whenever the electron present in the second orbit, what is the energy it has? That's all. And whenever it is jumping from e1 
one. How much energy it is having in this orbit? That value. If you take the difference between those two by getting the energy, how much energy it is releasing? That is the difference of these two energy levels. Here, E can also be written as H into nu. This is equal to E two minus E one. Or further simplification, nu can be written as C by lambda. C by lambda. This is equal to E two minus of E one. By using this formula, you can find out how much energy that is released by this electron whenever it is jumping from higher energy state to lower energy states. And these are the three important postulates that were given by Niels Bohr regarding the revolution of the electron around the nucleus. That is the first one. And regarding what do you mean by stationary orbits? That is the second one. And next one. How to find out the angular momentum of the electron while it is revolving around the nucleus? That is one. And next one, how to calculate the energy whenever the electron is taking the transition from higher energy level to lower uh, lower energy level? That also can be given by the this formula. These are the four important information that are possible is given by uh, the scientist called as Niels Bohr in 1933. And by using that, by studying these three postulates. Can got the answer. The electrons are evolving around the nucleus. The reason is because of electrostatic force of attraction. And second one, why they are uh, release the energy whenever jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level? That is because of whenever the electrons become unstable in the higher orbit. That's why they are jumping from higher to lower. In that process, they are releasing the energy. And these are the three important uh, postulates. And the next concept we will see that is. Next concept we can study. Nucleus of 
चार्ज न्यूक्लियस ऑफ चार्ज प्लस जेड इनटू ई देन द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन बिटवीन दिस न्यूक्लियस एंड दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड बाय यूजिंग द फार्मूला देन द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स ऑफ फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन बिटवीन बिटवीन न्यूक्लियस एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन इज गिवन बाय न्यूक्लियस एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन इज कैलकुलेटेड बाय दैट फार्मूला यू यू नो वेरी वेल दैट इज एफ इज इक्वल टू 1 बाय 4 बाय एप्सिलॉन नॉट दिस इज अ कूलम्स लॉ q1 into q2 divided by r square what is given this is the first particle that is z into e its charge that is the nucleus q2 is electron and its charge is that is also e leave the minus sign there that is just indicate the magnitude again this can be written as f is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon not z e square divided by r square And let us take it as equation number one. E into E is equal to next. Whenever the electron is revolving around the nucleus, the centripetal force provided that is due to electrostatic force of attraction. Continuously, whenever the electron is revolving around the nucleus, there is an imaginary force acting on the electron that is always towards the center. It means it is not a centrifugal. It is a centripetal. The centripetal force. The centripetal force acting on the electron. The centripetal force acting on electron is given by is given by is given by as you know very well that is centripetal force can be calculated by using m v square divided by r and here mass of the electron, orbital velocity of the electron, and this is radius. Let us take it as an equation number two here. And the magnitude of electrostatic force of attraction as well as the magnitude of centripetal force both are same because the centripetal force provided to the electron that is why the electrostatic force of attraction. That's why if you calculate this value and this value both are same. Therefore, equate equation number one and two. Equate equation number one and two. One and two. You are getting. Yam v square divided by r is equal to yam v square divided by r is equal to one by four by epsilon naught z e square divided by r. And next, this can be simplified. Here, that is simplify the equation. Equate those two and equate those two. And simplify, you are getting here yeah, this one r square. Yam v square divided by r is equal to one by four by epsilon naught z e square divided by r r square. R square and r getting cancelled. And here yam v square is equal to one by four by epsilon naught. Z into e square divided by r. Take the r this side, and here r is equal to one by four by epsilon naught. Z into e square divided by take m v square at the right side denominator. That is becomes m into v square. Let us take this equation as third one. As you know very well, the second postulates given by the board. You know very well. The second postulate, the second postulate given by the board, that is how to calculate the angular momentum of electron whenever it is revolving around the nucleus. That can be calculated by that is m into v into r is equal to n h divided by two pi. This is angular momentum can be calculated by using this formula and squaring this one at both sides. Squaring. On both side, on both side you are getting that is m square v square r square is equal to n square h square divided by 4 pi square. 
and here v square can be written as v square is equal to x square x square divided by 4 pi square. I am taking m square v square at the right side denominator that is m square v square and let us substitute in the equation number 3 here because here v square term is there I got the v square term that is x square x square divided by this one substitute this value here you are getting r is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into z square divided by again here yeah, as it is, v square can be written as n square h square divided by 4 pi square m square v square and cancel the terms r is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into z e square divided by m as it is and take this term at the numerator 4 pi square m square v square divided by n square h square and cancel 4 pi 4 pi square and here m and m square getting cancel and next one just you can take one more step here that is r is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into z e square divided by m into take this one on numerator that is 4 pi square m square v square divided by n square h square just you can calculate or whatever it is the terms they are cancelled with each other you cancel then find out the value of r you are getting that is n square h square and divided by epsilon naught divided by pi m z into e square you are getting this term and next here for hydrogen atom r is equal to n square h square epsilon naught pi m e square because i am substituting z is equal to 1 for hydrogen atom hydrogen atom and next simplify by applying the values simplify you are getting r is equal to for example, you can take first orbit n is equal to 1, Planck's constant, epsilon naught value that is 8.8 by 4 into 10 to the power minus 2, mass of electron, charge of electron, you substitute, you are getting that is the 0 0.529 angstrom. By using this formula, you are able to calculate, you are able to calculate the radius of any given orbit. And here n is there, if you want to calculate the first orbit radius, substitute n as a 1. And here if you want to calculate the radius of second orbit, you can substitute n as a 2. Or if you want to find out the radius of infinity to orbit or nth orbit, you can, find, you can substitute it as a infinity. That's why by using this formula, we are able to find out the radius of any given orbit depending upon this n value. And this is radius equation.